name's Clyde Doyle anyway, um, and I am the co-chair with uh, Shirley Casey of the MN Sign for Change. And uh, I've been running now for a few years, I fill in on it, but um, my own background is in actual, I suppose, uh, would be in kind of, I suppose, traditional design fields. So I was a model maker for a few years and I moved into industrial design. Uh, went away for a few years, worked at that, and then I came back and moved into production design for TV and film, theatre. Um, and I started teaching maybe 10, 11 years ago. And I'm kind of moving into more kind of a research uh, <coughs> role at IT, teaching and research, and I do a lot of work in, um, I do a PhD in ecological design, essentially. Um, so uh, that's where I'm coming from. That's my background. Uh, and we'll, <clears throat> I think I have a list of the other lectures on the programme or people, but we can talk about that any, uh, any different people that contribute to the programme in different ways. Okay, so it might be the, the two of us, or the two of us, myself, that's okay too. I'll shoot through this, so I reckon it'll take about maybe half an hour. So like I said, we'll run through the presentation. I'll keep an eye on the uh, lobby, so people join, I'll just let them in. But we'll run through the... Uh, <clears throat> Run through the presentation. Get a view to say here. Um, so, can I ask, are either of you uh, familiar with? Um, <clears throat> IADT, any chance? No, okay. Well, look, that's good then, because of the little introduction piece on IADT it's, itself as a place and institute. Um, so I'll leave that in. I won't scoot through it. But again, I'll keep an eye on my chat. So if you have any questions, uh, you can just pop them in there. Yeah, or you, I'm happy if you shout out as well. Okay, that's no problem either. So, um, okay, that up there. Okay, so I presume you can see that stuff. I'm just going to move the screen around so I can see the lobby. Okay. Use teams every day, obviously, but I'm um, familiar with uh, using lobbies and whatnot. All right, there we go. Okay. Okay, so you're in the US. Okay, well, that's really interesting because I remember the first time we went over to George Brown uh, and uh, there was a big thing about uh, somebody had, we were discussing the program to like uh, alumni and potential applicants and we had a big meeting with 20 people around it and it was online as well and somebody showed that it says yeah you do know that there's another institute in north america called iudt which is a bit of a it uh, it wasn't a it had a really bad reputation i think it was like a i think it was like a like a scam like in some way it was like, like it wasn't a real institute at all um but I was like, well, you ought to be able to change that, go back to IUT and change the name. We're going to be, you know, highly unlikely. So look, we'll crack on, right? So basically, and you can see this first slide here, we've asked as far as design for change. Um, what you see here is that we have, uh, there's three kind of subheadings here uh, to this. Uh, we have social design, ecological design, and design futures, which we will come to at the end, actually, because we're making small changes to the programme. Um, and they are very small changes, but I suppose uh, it will give the um, it, it will give uh, people coming onto the program from 2024 on the opportunity to kind of I suppose um, signal what exactly is they're going to focus on. Just you know I mean now you don't even have to do that coming onto the program in actual reality, or you can decide that like at a certain point when you're in stream. But we'll come to that at the end. All right. So IDT itself, if you're unfamiliar, um, it uh, is, as we're very happy to say, is Ireland's only Institute of Technology, which focuses on creative, uh, cultural and technological industries. OK, so that's kind of the traditional or that's the kind of official mandate of IDT. 
established maybe like 20 years ago <clears throat> as a kind of a, not a counterpoint, but like to kind of, you know, uh, exist in the, you know, kind of creative uh, education space along with NCAD, which is more kind of like fine art focused. Um, it's, it's kind of useful just to kind of have a sense as well uh, in terms of like where the MA Design for Change comes from, that there's this kind of a, this is the undergrad, so we're looking at the, uh, <clears throat> at, um, uh, the undergrad programs uh, that you'll have at IADT, which I think is interesting, because obviously when we do a lot of uh, collaborative work and we engage like um, uh, other participants on, in like design workshops and uh, design charrettes, obviously the kind of uh, undergrad student body is a, is a fantastic uh, source of collaborators. So these are the types of programs um, that we would draw a lot of our um, applicants from as well. And then a postgraduate level, this is the suite of postgrad, which some of you may or may not be familiar with. Um, so you can see here, it's kind of, you know, a lot of psychology, um, user experience, um, uh, and there's a few, uh, a good suite of um, uh, undergrad programs as well. Uh, sorry, um, uh, certificates and diplomas too. All right, we have someone else join us. Hi, hi Denise. Um, so what's interesting about um, IDT as well, and it's a kind of, I suppose, lots of changes happening um, on the institute level, is that we have this new, which you may or may not be familiar with, this new kind of uh, higher education initiative called the Creative Futures Academy, which IDT are a major partner of, and uh, <clears throat> along with NCD and UCD. And it's to basically create this new kind of uh, suite of kind of offerings in the kind of uh, creative post-grad sector uh, to help people in the workplace or look at the shift uh, within industry in different directions that they can kind of upskill with what we describe as like micro-credentials. And we will be participating in that to a certain extent as a certain, a certain number in the first term of our modules will be part of that. Uh, and happy to take questions about Ada as we get there. So the MA uh, Design for Change itself, well, you know, as and I give some context, this, as it says on the website, it's a full time international practices program, which gives designers and non designers alike, which is a very important aspect. So, you know, we're very open and welcome uh, people with no design background at all onto the program. And you get an in depth knowledge of social design practice, design strategy, which is really important. And um, the original title of the program was Interdisciplinary Design Strategies. Uh, and it's like, how do you leverage these skills of design, okay, to, you know, create change, uh, positive, often people come for different reasons, it's like, you know, um, they've identified a thing that they want to do themselves, or they want to shift within the organisation or industry they're in, or they're interested in, I suppose, um, uh, assisting uh, society and the world in these large kind of, I suppose, societal and environmental transitions that we're going through now. And I suppose if you look at it from the point of view as like social design being the main underpinning of the program, these are kind of the features which I put in here. So, and this would be the features of the program that it's about, uh, it's, it, it's a collaborative, it's convivial, okay. Um, it's a uh, multidisciplinary, it's a uh, critical, okay. So there's a large component of the program where there's a focus and an expectation that like as a kind of a design practitioner or somebody who's going to become a designer or become a design strategist, that you develop a kind of a critical consciousness and the ability to kind of critique what it is you're doing and how you do it. Um, we expect people to be kind of cognizant uh, of their political uh, position and the political, I suppose, implications of design and what design does uh, and to embrace kind of radical approaches. That idea, which very much comes from the IWB, that's local and global, uh, we expect things to be eco-centered, planet-centered. Uh, we expect that work to be kind of meaningful and for you to find meaning in the work that you do. Uh, and really important, uh, and last but not least, we would kind of see this as being, I suppose, uh, value-led, okay? So it's value-led um, uh, design. That's what we're pursuing here, you know? This idea that as a designer and as a group of designers when you're working together, that what you're doing is you are um, uh, identifying what type of design you want to be and what type of practitioner you're going to be. And that often comes from just kind of identifying your values as an individual and hopefully as a group of people uh, who are moving through this program together, uh, working on a variety of different projects. 
Um, I put this in here, it's like different means and modes. So obviously, you know, it's focused on design strategy, use like mixed methodologies, workshops and charrettes are a fundamental part of it, you know, community engagement, um, uh, experimental design, uh, kind of sp speculative critical design and ecological design, and a lot more. These are just a few things that we've pulled out here, you know, just to give you an idea of the different activities. But again, I'll show you some projects. I think that really make it very, very clear then um, what that might be. All right, so design for change, we look at, like I said, 2020 and 2022, you know. Um, <clears throat> uh, so how the programme works, I suppose, um, uh, would be, and I should really, if I should just go back a little bit, actually, to the, and we'll come back to a little bit at the end, but um, where the programme came from originally was that we, um, <clears throat> George Brown College and the Institute of, uh, the Institute Without Boundaries in George Brown College, uh, they were working uh, in Dublin uh, with Dublin City Council on a project and they were uh, coming to work on a kind of a city, uh, like an aspect of city planning. And they came to Dublin, they organised a very large charrette, which is part of their uh, um, major project that year on their postgrad diploma. Now, IDT made a kind of a really strong connection with them at that stage. And a couple of years later, myself and Shirley went to George Brown College um, in Toronto. Uh, to talk about what potential, I suppose, programs we could develop or kind of collaborations. What emerged was this um, idea of like um, having a kind of a almost like a partner, a postgrad program in Ireland, which would run in tandem with the uh, Institute Without Boundaries, um, a one year uh, postgrad diploma. And then the Canadian students then would come to Dublin and finish out their master's degree uh, with a capstone project at IDT. So that's the structure of the programme. We'll have a look at a little bit more at the end in terms of like how the programme runs out and what the commitments are. Um, but this is written very much with the Institute Without Boundaries. Um, we still have some of the faculty, um, in particular Chris Pandolfi, who uh, teaches on a couple of modules uh, and is a core member of the team who teaches in from Toronto, actually. Um, <clears throat> and so that's the kind of background of the program that we kind of developed with the, um, with the Institute Without Boundaries. But where it's going now is that it's, um, the Institute of Boundaries is changing. It's becoming a bigger thing, actually, we call the uh, Brookfield Sustainability Institute, which I recommend you have a look at. And uh, we have a meeting tomorrow to actually push this on a little bit further. We were over with them in February to discuss this. But, um, we are kind of proposing and developing pathways for graduates of our program to go over onto paid internships in Toronto, actually with this uh, Brookfield Sustainability Institute. Pop it into your search bar there and have a look at it, okay? Um, I think I had a slide in about this. It seemed to have got deleted, so that shouldn't get to start. Anyway, so before we get on, right? So what happens is, right, the students come in in the first term and what they do is essentially that you work together. Uh, there's there's uh, three different modules in each term. But then in the second term, you work on a group collabor a collaborative project together. And this is an example of the first uh, run out of the program in Dublin 20 and tw uh, 2020 uh, through to 2021, actually. Uh, and what you see here is um, uh, the outcome of a kind of a, a kind of a framework manual for a group of designers who are in some ways like setting the groundwork for the program as well, you know. So that idea of collaboration, so the first cohort of students came through were really influential on how they did it. Um, what we're going to have a look at here is then when you go beyond, so you kind of finish your second term, right, which goes from obviously uh, January to um, May. Uh, what you do is then during that second term, you're working on this collaborative project, but you're also working towards uh, developing a proposal for the final term. Uh, and we're going to go through examples here of final projects that students kind of um, developed themselves completely and ran out in that final term. So here we have Kay. Kay Owen did some amazing work. She was funded by the um, uh, Cancer um, Research Ireland uh, to do this project, actually. And she looked into deficits as a survivor herself, into like the, particularly into kind of access to information for people who have been diagnosed. Uh, did a fantastic project and she's developed that into a kind of a PhD proposal, which is which is she's in the process of applying. Um, here we have Pooja's fantastic problem, she, uh, fantastic project where she was looking at like this idea of like the meaning of, I suppose, the concept of uh, 
the smart city, but in the context of um, uh, India, right? Where, where, where she worked as an architect uh, and she came to Dublin to do her uh, MA and she worked remotely for a good portion of that time. But you can see here a very, very different project and a different kind of set of considerations. Uh, here we have Stephanie Golden's project, which would be in the area of I suppose, ecological design, of course. Um, and she was looking at kind of strategies uh, to work um, uh, in kind of ecological ways by kind of um, looking at uh, more than human actors. Uh, and how do you kind of in, like incorporate the considerations of the more than human? Um, really fantastic project, which kind of focuses on storytelling and developing narratives. Uh, another really great project here by Justine and that same cohort. Um, she was basically trying to develop tools that would help people understand how how you think about time. Now, obviously, the focus is on designers and how designers think about time. But this is a tool that was open for anybody to kind of use and participate in uh, and to get them to think about. So, you know, she did a huge amount of work into researching the philosophy of time, different aspects of it. But she created this fantastic kind of workbook, which was um, uh, used and completed by a kind of a large number of participants in different parts of the world. Um, here we have Alex, uh, and actually a really nice project, very, very neat again in kind of field of strategy, looking at like how do smaller companies say uh, begin to employ kind of a sustainable uh, practices in their kind of business models. Um, uh, a really, really great project, which, you know, she um, uh, got a job straight out uh, in London, actually, as a consultant. Her background was uh, landscape architecture. I should really tell you the backgrounds of the participants, actually, or the, the, the graduates. Um, so here's an example of work from her thing. And this is some, This is from 21, 22. This is the, um, the group project. <clears throat> so uh, what you have here is, again, uh, the students, we kind of worked on the theme of precarity for the group project, so and different aspects of it. So each cohort to come in, they kind of like explore the concept of precarity, the meaning of it in different contexts, and then they kind of extrapolate certain parts. So it's a theme we're kind of probably going to run for about five years, just the anticipation before we change it again. Uh, uh, and then here we have some uh, graduate work from this year. Um, again, in this kind of area of like, like ecological design or planet central design. Um, Elizabeth, who has a background in um, zoology and marine science, uh, she was looking at ways that we could kind of um, essentially uh, engage the modern human again, but get understanding into like uh, different types of environments in this particular place where we really focus on kind of the oceans. Uh, that was a really fantastic project which involved um, world building. Again, if you talk about mixed methodologies, so like world building. Um, uh, design fiction, um, but a huge amount about there's a very large kind of leaning towards a like, community engagement as well, and a huge variety of like participants were involved in this from scientists to community workers to to people who worked in the fishing industry, etc. All right, really great project, actually. And again, from this year, and we have this idea of like, um People, I suppose, looking at things in new ways and looking at like current systems in very critical ways. Um, here we have another fantastic project by Jenna, uh, who was a, a George Brown graduate who came to Dublin to um, last uh, year. Um, and her project was focusing on like, basically she'd started, and this is important, she started with this idea of like looking at like quantification as a concept, particularly in agriculture and how that affected how things worked. And then she pivoted towards this more, I suppose, like, um, more kind of an ontological exploration of like what it means to kind of understand nature and understand kind of the agricultural uh, process as somebody who works on it. Really, really great project. Um, so moving on now to give a little more context and surrounding around the um, design for change. Um, it's a separate thing, but it's kind of has emerged from design for change really is that we set up this new research lab in IT called the Public Design Lab. Um, and what it is, it kind of sits within IEDT. There's a number of us kind of involved, uh, myself, Shirley, of course, and there's also Dr. Henry Kenna um, uh, and uh, Peter Evers. And essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to develop this like design lab, which like really works, uh, has this focus on design for good. 
So obviously there's lots of different design labs in uh, Ireland that kind of focus on different aspects of industry usually. But our mission really is to look at like social and positive social and environmental impact. All right. Um, uh, we have this kind of mission, this idea that is about creating, you know, creating change, establishing space to kind of do this kind of important work that's not just about essentially commercial work. Um, kind of this idea as well, that you kind of expand horizons, like how do you do projects that aren't just about like a kind of a term of a funding um, project or, you know, like how do you look at like longitudinal projects fundamentally? And this idea then that what we do is if you look at it and um, I can ping a link, link into, you should find a link on the website actually, but um, you can see that we put up particular projects, you know, particularly successful projects or projects that really align with public design lab the students have produced. Um, then it's brand new. We actually only kind of launched this last year, but we have a couple of projects that we're putting through at the moment, which is like um, we have this uh, project which actually came in with the new head of research um, and develop an AR app, which uh, helps kind of communicate sustainability and concepts around sustainability. Uh, and we also uh, were successful in application to um, Creative Ireland. Um, to uh, develop a, a kind of a proposal um, for between kind of a collaborative project between DLR again and IDT. Uh, and that was a really great project, which is still on, which is still running on actually. And looks like it might, uh, there might be a few really good outcomes, including a kind of a futures festival between IDT. And uh, so that's the idea. And we kind of, we selectively look at different projects that come in. Uh, and, you know, we invite students and graduates as well if they want to kind of come to us and, and, and use the public design lab as a kind of a, I suppose, kind of a structure and a device for them to plug for them. Uh, I'll scoot through this because I want to get back onto the programme again, but um, we have the, uh, and open up the questions. But again, this is kind of important. Uh, you know, we have this idea of like, it's about social design. Um, this idea that it kind of uses design and creative practices at IDT. Uh, and again, it goes back to the idea of like creating positive social uh, impact, uh, looking at like wicked problems, large more complex problems, you know, obviously, you know, facing into the climate crisis and see what design can do to alleviate or contribute to kind of a positive uh, transition, uh, looking at, you know, multidimensional problems um, and, you know, obviously challenges of the post COVID world, which I know it seems like a long time ago, but it wasn't that long ago. Um, so, yeah, wrapping it up here, and I suppose I think, you know, I'll put the slide, I shifted this around because I shifted this out, but what we're doing is we're making these small changes for 2024, if anybody's interested, which I'm going to be completely honest, I know this is recording, right? <laughs> but this is essentially almost just to make it clear to people on the, who are applying to the program what it is that you can do, yeah? Well, essentially, if you see the projects that stu students have done or graduates have done up to this point, uh, is that they're kind of just sit within these um, different kind of uh, headings, right? So you've got social design, community engagement, um, uh, you know, kind of, I suppose, interdisciplinary design. Then you've got projects which are in the, the sphere of ecological design, very clearly, you can work with oceans and thinking about time question goes on then also you have like bleeding a little bit into like design futures so this idea and there's a focus there dr hillary ken is coming on board to, to to lead that particular thread she already teaches on the program um which like looks at technology and the effects of technology and we'll be very much looking at like technology using methodologies like speculative design uh, and design futuring okay so that's what that is in the next couple of years so i will leave that there it's already just put that out there so you can see it as a structure. Um, so uh, does anybody have any questions? Hopefully you do, you know? And if you can speak by all means, uh, stick your mic on, yeah? It's easier. It's easier. Stop sharing. Oh, 
I'll ask this a question. Oh, yeah, you can't speak, okay. Yeah, so there's a few other things, you know, haven't included at this point, actually, because I suppose things just haven't been finalized and resolved, but we're, um, we've worked for a few years now uh, on, on, on at a different level, actually, more like around Erasmus with the uh, Polish um, uh, Japanese Institute of Information Technology. They've got a few really great design programs there. And we've done some uh, Erasmus exchanges with them. And we're looking at developing some Erasmus facilitation there in the first term where there could be an exchange uh, between Poland and also with a partner in Japan. And that's like kind of tenuous. I'm not putting that there as like a carrot in any way. But we are kind of like eager to um, develop those kind of uh, Erasmus pathways. So we're currently talking to Tama University in Tokyo. We have a meeting with them in May to discuss that. So there's lots of things happening. Lots of issues. I think the biggest thing, most tangible thing, I suppose, from the point of view of um, uh, collaboration is with the Brookfield Stability Institute. And they've got a huge um, tranche of funding from uh, the Brookfield in Lake Institute in Canada which is a philanthropic uh, um, institute. Um, and they're saying this after, because I suppose, like, have, to, have the focus of the Institute of no Boundaries be totally geared towards, like, sustainability, essentially. Uh, but really kind of looking to scale up massively. So at the moment, it might, like, uh, there might be 10 to 15 students that are looking to bump that up to, like, four intakes per year. But um, people would either have the option to get a, Postgrad diploma or to work completely with the idea is, and this is what we discussed and we're discussing tomorrow, uh, to kind of sort out this idea that it's almost guaranteed, but just needs to be signed off fully, that um, graduates of our program, past or, or like, you know, recent, uh, <clears throat> will be accepted almost directly onto um, a, a kind of a paid internship in Toronto. Okay, brilliant. Uh, Okay, so the shreds are a significant portion. What do they look like? Okay, so how do they work is? That's a good question on the shreds. They are. Um, so how it works is that as part of your final project, so you, you basically have like one shred per term. Okay, that's kind of what they would. Um, yeah, uh, so I'll answer the question first about the shreds. So you've got one shred per term. So the first one actually is when you start, right? So. Um, You'll have you will participate in a charrette, as in you will join a charrette that's happening at IUT. Right now, the charrette that you're joining is actually the final charrette that the people in second year starting their final kind of term are doing. All right. So if you saw those final projects, all those students in the second term uh, prepare a final project proposal, and as part of that proposal, they need to kind of run a charrette. All right. Um, and what they do is essentially with the students at IGT and sometimes external partners, depending on the project and, you know, depending on your project, you're absolutely encouraged uh, and, uh, you know, invited to invite other participants to the charrette. But essentially, there will be like a number of IGT students um, that you will be kind of, uh, I suppose, assigned, right? Um, and you will run a charrette with them usually around the third to fourth week in September, okay? We're actually finalizing the timetable next couple of weeks. So if anybody, um, you know, is applying uh, and is successful, we will ping you out the timetable. Um, if you email us, we can ping you out the timetable as soon as we have it, yeah? So that's your first charrette. So the first charrette, you come in straight out the door and you get an introduction to what a charrette is and then you get to participate in one and kind of observe, uh, observe, okay? So you're not facilitating anything. You're just like another participant in the room. Um, researching and using design tools and um, whatever type of charrette has been designed, that's what you'll be doing. The next charrette you will participate in is um, in at the start of the uh, second term around February. Um, it changes every year. So in the first couple of years, we we kind of participated online in the IWB International Charrette. That's like a really big charrette that they run every year. Um, and although you were invited to participate in that, um, 
what we did this year was we actually like the current students the current cohort actually developed their own charrette and a very very small one like a two-day thing essentially they're given a structure and you get to run a small charrette at that point so essentially what you get to do is you're getting to kind of like practice the facilitation of those tools uh, and that process uh, and you'd write a brief uh, kind of a report on that and then of course the final charrette you run um, official charrette really because people often run workshops and stuff way beyond uh, and on into the uh, third term um, so th those three charrettes what we'll do is we'll actually have them in the timetable so obviously the commitment going on to the next question is the commitment is currently we have a class on uh, Wednesday yeah um, afternoon or evening Dublin time uh, around about now actually uh, in this very slot uh, and then it's all day on Thursday yeah and what we're looking to do is to facilitate blended learning as well yeah so we're still looking at that but at the moment officially it's still like on campus um but uh chris delivers online on thursday morning anyway and then hillary um uh, delivers in person on thursday and i deliver online so at the moment the program is still very much blended learning okay so it's delivered like in two modes now what people will find is that they get a lot more than come in uh at least, you know, for most of the term, especially when it gets to the point where people are finalizing final projects and stuff, it's nice. But everybody is working. Like everybody on the program is working. There's one or two who aren't working, okay, who are lucky enough not to have to, but it's just like undergrad, you know, and students in undergrad have like a full 10 to five commitment on most undergrad programs and all of them are working to some capacity. Um, so usually what you would do is say, if you're working full-time for the first term, um, you'll have the timetable and you'll have to negotiate off those, like negotiate those hours with your employer and how you do that. Um, so really you're looking at Thursday. And then you've also got the charrette weeks, which is a bit more of a commitment. But that's in the first and second term and then the charrette in the third term. But in the third term, OK, you don't have any classes. You've got a supervisor, essentially, uh, who you meet every couple of weeks uh, and you can arrange that at any time. So fundamentally in the third term, beyond the charrette, it's very much completely self-managed. It's almost like uh, designed by research mode at that point. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. So when you ask the question, how many, like all of them, as far as I know, are working in some capacity, and one or two of them still have full-time jobs, and they manage to just get to Thursday. So obviously, you know, you're working at weekends, you're doing all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? uh, in terms of coursework, it's a slog. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Um, but it's manageable and we understand everybody's in a different situation uh, and you know we communicate like we you know have relationships with all the students yeah as in you know totally open you know we talk to each other um i'm recording this you know shift deadlines and stuff like that when people are under pressure it's not we're not like it's a post-grad experience okay um so it's important is that um you get the the most out of this experience as you can, do you know what I mean? And we want to help you do that, okay? And everybody um, has different kind of time commitments and personal commitments. Uh, and, you know, COVID really, you know, helped, you know, us learn how to facilitate all those different modes of teaching and learning and locations and stuff, okay? Uh, Pooja was a good example because she was meant to come to Dublin and I couldn't come to Dublin for the first term. Um, and really well into the second term, actually. Um, and it's great, it's too great, there's no problem, you know, just like, yeah, delivered it both ways in studio and online. Worked really well. Oh, any other questions, anybody, or? No, that's cool. Now, look, this is important, right? If you have any questions, yeah, or any queries or anything, right? Just, I see there's a question coming in. You can email like myself for sure. You just have a look at the course. Pretty sure my it's my email on it. Uh, I'm always happy as well just to have a call with somebody, have a chat, do you know what I mean? Because it's it's kind of, you know, it's complicated, do you know what I mean? To kind of like plan to do a postgrad. Um, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of considerations, and, you know, you'll always have questions. So like, whatever it is, if you want to, come and talk to us about it, we, we can do it, you know. I mean, it's a small program, like the numbers aren't huge, being honest, we're trying to grow them. Um, uh, yeah, ooh, yeah, totally, psychology, 
that's a great background to have, Denise, in all seriousness. Yeah, like absolutely. Like we have like, I mean, uh, yeah, for moving abroad. I got a few questions there. Yeah. So, yes. So question. So, yeah. So like basically the, like the classes would start in the third week of September. Yeah. And like I said, we will absolutely confirm the whole blended aspect of it. But uh, we can do that. OK, so somebody is stuck somewhere or can't get over. The charrette will be tricky enough. Um, but we're talking about this all the time. For instance, like it was always the kind of plan in the initial drafting of the program that everybody will go over to Toronto for the uh, international stretch in one week of September. It was literally written into the program. And that part of it was that people come on the program didn't understand they'd have to have the budget to do that. Now, you know, justifying people flying around, you know, doing transatlantic flights for a week a design workshop who we know that the results might not be exactly the same, but are all pretty, pretty good online. Yeah, done in different modes. It's a cost benefit analysis. Um, that's part of it, you know. So, like I said, you know, if for some reason it's tricky for you, say, um, Alec, you know what I mean? Uh, we 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 could talk about that, but usually it would start in the third week of September. Yeah, like the actual class is proper. I suppose we invite you to the shred to participate in it, but the actual classes for the program, as in each kind of there's three modules in each term. Those modules really don't kick off until uh, the first week of October. And then answer the question about psychology. That's a fantastic background um, because you have an understanding in how research works. So you're probably quite bored in the or not bored necessarily, but uh, when it comes to like design research methodologies, you'd be like, yeah, I got it. You know, when it comes to ethics and stuff like that, you'll be all covered there. You know, that's a big thing that we kind of have to. There's different types of ethics, of course. There's design ethics, which are a little bit different. We'll talk about that, but it's a great background. Like we have, um, and this is what we really saw with the. Um, oh, that's really interesting on the tech part. It does help. It doesn't really. It, it's not. Um, whatever. It doesn't do any harm at all either way. But the idea that you know how to do research, you understand what research can do. You know what I mean, and you understand how to kind of conduct research. That's a huge advantage to have, okay? Particularly when it comes to like user-centered design uh, and um, you know designing research fundamentally. Like it'd be bits that I'd be banging on about design research in the start of term, and you'd be like zoning out because you're like, crikey, this is like you know second year psychology, perhaps. All right. Um, but yeah, no, we've had like you know sociologists in the program, people with medical backgrounds. Um, uh, yeah like a huge kind of variety of backgrounds, which is like really, really, I mean, and this is an important part. It's a huge th strength of the program when it comes to that interdisciplinary aspect of it. Do you know what I mean? If everyone's a designer in the room, then you're kind of stuck with that kind of, you know, it makes it, not that it's a problem because what you do is you design kind of different ways of doing research to, to get other perspectives and insights. But um, it's a huge advantage when it comes to like, you know, developing kind of like value structures and, they're practicing just as a class. Um, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's interesting. The tech path, yeah. Okay. Um, and what's I suppose the, the, the biggest, like I suppose, like the thing that everybody, so like designers and non-designers alike, the big kind of aspect of the program is that we kind of want, you know like the graduates to develop a kind of, I suppose, that term again of like critical consciousness. Do you know what I mean? This idea that like when you're doing something, you're kind of like, you know, you're kind of critically aware of what it is you're doing, how you're doing it, and the implications of that in like a broader sense. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, that can sound like a kind of a, kind of a heavy burden, but it's not really because when it's folded into your design kind of practice, it's just something that you do. Do you know what I mean? You know, so you then bring those values back out into kind of industry or in, in, in back into your studio or your kind of organization. Um, and this is a huge part of it, you know. Um, and I suppose this is what's, you know, in terms of, I suppose, one of the, didn't include it, but, you know, I don't know if you heard about, you know, transition design, which is like a major kind of, um, I suppose, like, uh, I suppose part of the kind of design kind of you know like uh, kind of like a an emerging field not really emerging now it's about 10 years 15 years on the run but this idea that like designing to facilitate transition and designing to facilitate change 
in some ways that's what it is so when you talk about designing for a change obviously you know we want you know you to be agents of change but also facilitators of change you know and positive change like that's what's really key you know so when people are working on tech i do not a whole lecture but a serious one on like you know uh you know the kind of um uh the kind of like the dangers of uh, the kind of techno fix and stuff, you know, particularly around speculative design, actually, do you know what I mean? With this idea of like looking at tech and, you know, having to look at it critically. And we're doing that across all aspects of IDT. We've been talking about the head of graphic design today, about that exact thing. When you're designing, how are you designing it? Why are you designing it? And, you know, all of that can be kind of worked through by applying uh, kind of a strong, well developed value framework as a designer or a group of designers. Anyway. I'm waffling now because I'm not used to having complete silence in these calls. So look at nice to see your initials on the screen. Uh, but yeah, nice to see Denise, uh, Sergi, Alex, and Alec. Right? If you have any questions at all, seriously now, super happy to do it. Anybody's interested in the program, you know, we can just organize a quick call, have a natter, or just answer an email. Do you know what I mean? Um. Yeah. So email the recording, you'll have to ask, whoever sends you the link, you can ask them actually, okay? You can ask them. It was recorded anyway, I had no choice in the matter. I wouldn't have recorded myself, I had a choice. <laughs> um, yeah. So it was Orla, Orla McCormick, I can see is the name, yeah? So, yeah. So any questions, that seriously, yeah, ping me on, because I always good to chat about it, because, you know, it could be, we're always available to talk about it. You know, like I said, it's a kind of a new program still. Um, we kind of see ourselves in that kind of role of like, you know, jobs for the future is a big thing. Do you know what I mean? Like we see, like, you know, and we, you know, like well, we know, you know what I mean? Ireland's all slightly behind the curve, these kind of things. So it's like we're kind of like priming people for jobs of the future, you know. Um and a couple of examples of that, like those projects where people like when they were designing their final projects, they were literally thinking like, what job would I like? Can I design a project that can kind of like demonstrate the skills that I would need to do that job? And Alex actually, just because uh, it comes to mind because it was so quick within like a, a month of graduating, she had a job as a consultant in London. And she had come straight from her undergrad as in landscape architecture. So this is it, okay? So hopefully we'll see you joining us as a, Science for change. And again, seriously, guys, love to get an email and have a chat and answer any questions. Okay.